All right, we're just here with Pippin this morning. This is uh, first thing in the morning here, so we're just letting Pippin out to go uh, on a potty break here. We're just letting uh, him out, letting the dogs out one at a time here. It's pretty cold outside, it's dark at this time in the morning, so I don't usually do a social until it starts to get bright out. So we're just letting the dogs out one at a time here for a morning potty break. Um, so what we've done here is we got his e-collar already on. We opened the crate door, we put the e-collar on, and now we're gonna ask him for a down. Pippin, down. And you can actually already see that excitement. Nope. I already see that excitement of uh, wanting to come out of that crate. So I said down, he did not immediately down. He actually thought I was gonna ask him to come out of the crate, which is again, that anticipatory mindset. Um, I corrected him, I said nope, and then I told him down to lay down, tapped on the e-collar stimulation, tapping on the e-collar stim again. Good, until he lays down. And that's what we're looking for, is him to lay back down there so we can calmly have him exit the crate. So what we're gonna do now is get up and we're gonna give him a release cue, right? Our release cue for him is gonna be, we're gonna recall him for this one. We're not gonna say, uh, our release cue would be uh, B-R-E-A-K. We're not gonna say that because then he'll excitedly rush out of that crate and start zipping around, coming up to me for pets. So we're gonna recall him here. Hip and tuck. Good. Sit. Good. That's what we're looking for right there. Nice sit. Nope. Sit. Good, correct on the e-collar for that for breaking that sit. He gets a little excited in the morning. He expects, you know, he wants to come up to you and like rub himself all over you and stuff. I don't mind giving him a good morning pet, but I don't want him rushing into my space and rubbing all over me like that. Not exactly the healthiest way for him to start the day. So we're gonna give him a heel command, tap our tone button, heel. And now we're gonna heel through the house here, right? We're gonna practice our threshold, meaning the stairs are a big one for us, sit. We don't want dogs rushing up and down stairs. We wanna make sure that they're nice and calm and they're coming when we release them. Nope. That's a nope and a tap on the e-collar right there. Broke the sit. Stick. Heel. Tap on the tone button again. And again, if he walks up the stairs without permission, he should sit on his own. Hit. Good. Stay. Heel. Bringing him on over to the back door here. Dom's gonna join. Not letting him go sniff into the corners of the kitchen and stuff. That's a big one for a lot of dogs. They like to come into the kitchen and start sniffing around the baseboards and around the counter and stuff. We're gonna make sure he's not doing that here. Hip sit. Good, get a nice sit from him. Now he's a little in my way, so I'm just gonna shuffle into him a little bit. Sit. Good. Move him out of the way. And then we're gonna open up this door here. We're gonna walk outside here. And now we're outside, right? So what we could do is we could release him. But I think he's going to anticipate, so what I'm going to do is say his name and give him a different command instead of a release. Hip, down. Good boy. Hip, break. Down, break. Good job, guys. Nice work. And off they go. So they've been out there for about 10, 15 minutes now. We're just going to recall Pip back in. That's our tone button. Pip, come. There's Pip. Right there, Pip and come. I'm just going to put him back out there and have him sit. I'm not supposed to rush into the house like that, but the door also is not usually open when I recall him up the door, so that's all right. But we'll just put him back out there, have him sit or lay down. Pip. Nope. Nope. Even there, I just said his name. He broke the command. That's a note. Tap on the e-collar, a little bit of a shuffle out the door. Uh, he, he can't anticipate like that. He needs to wait for that release cue, right? Pip. Break. There we go. Just like that. That's what we're looking for, right? Now, I gave him a break command. Now he's in the house. He's kind of free to do his thing, right? Um, still a few rules. He's not allowed to go sniff around underneath the counter and stuff. I'll correct that. If he goes like to, you know, sniff under, get some food or something under there. We like to make a mess this year. We're not very well, apparently. So there's some food and stuff down there sometimes. Salt or whatever. Dogs will come inside and they'll just go right to licking that stuff up, right? Or they'll come over here to where our garbage is and they'll just start sniffing around there. That'll all get corrected if we release him into the, into the door. We say break and we release him into the house. A way you can prevent that is just by healing your dog through these areas the first few days, the first few weeks kind of thing, to get them in the habit of ignoring their, you know, ignoring these little things that they're not supposed to go and do, right? Um, so that's something that we would do normally. We'd be either heal him through the house. He's pretty good, so I'm allowed to let, I don't mind letting him out to be at liberty, free in the house. But now that he's free, what we can do is send him to his place, but right, Pip, place. Good. Now he's sent to his place bed, right? Now he's gonna lay down, cool. Now what I'm gonna do is I can go pour my coffee, I can make my morning coffee, I can send some emails, whatever I need to do while he's relaxing on his place bed right there. And then what that's gonna allow me to do is keep him 
relaxed, controlled, under command, and calm. Instead of just free roaming through the house, barking at things he hears and sees outside, he's right there, right? Not, not too far from me, but I can still leave the room and I can come back and he'll still be there when I get back, right? I don't need to worry about him free roaming the house, free roaming in the kitchen, chasing the cat or any of that stuff because he's on his place bed and he knows very, very well that he needs to stay on that bed when he's given that command. So anyway, so when we start the morning here, we let him out for that morning potty break, that morning social, whatever you want to do. And then we'll bring him back inside and we'll put him on the place so we can prepare for the rest of our morning, right? We can, like I said, we can make our coffee and stuff. Once we're done that, once we're done our little morning routine, getting ready, maybe you need to brush your teeth in the bathroom, leave him on the place, but it's a good spot for that. You can see here, I even have a back tie, a tether. These tethers are very, very handy for dogs that are especially prone to breaking off these place commands for distractions. We would just tether that leash up to a collar there. That one's a little short for Pippin. And we would have the dog lay there, but unable to actually break off of that spot more than a foot or so. And then we can easily correct them if, uh, if they do that, right? We can easily correct them, put them back into that position without having to chase them through the house or whatever the case is. Not that that's an issue with Pippin here. So again, we bring him inside, we put him on the place, but I give him, again, another command to follow instead of just coming in and doing his own thing. So once we're all ready, we can probably let him off of that place bed and I would go for a morning walk with him would be the next thing in, a, in the steps for when he goes home, right? Right now, we're probably actually gonna bring him downstairs and feed him. Um, like I said, he got about a 15 minute social out there with Dom, he was able to run around and play with him. So he doesn't really need to go for a walk right this minute yet. But once he goes home, I would encourage probably putting him on his place bed for a bit, getting yourself ready and then going for a good 25, 30, 40 minute walk with him in the morning bringing him back and then putting him into the crate and you can feed him once he's in the crate and then you can go to work or whatever the case is for, for you or for, for Pippin's owner, that's what she's gonna be doing. She'll be going off to work. I believe she's a teacher. So um, they'll be doing all this stuff pretty early in the morning, probably starting around five or so I would imagine. Um, getting him out for a nice walk, a nice early morning play session and then back in the crate. And that's gonna be their morning routine. That's gonna be the morning routine for a lot of dogs that actually come here and we sign home. So. Keep that in mind. Maybe you can work on some of this stuff with your dog at home, especially if you have some of these commands and the control of an e-collar especially is helpful for this. Otherwise, if you don't have the e-collar, just put a leash on the dog and you can do all of this stuff too with the dog on a leash, really controlling their movements, okay? So hopefully this video helped you guys. That's the start of Pippin's day. Uh, this will be helpful for his owner, obviously, but hopefully it's helpful for other people as well.